Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Katie and I'm an illustrator and designer and I create new YouTube videos every Sunday. Today I'm talking you through some of my scrapbooks and journals. So at the moment all of the video content on my YouTube channel is illustration and speed paints but I thought I'd show you a bit more about the paper crafting and memory keeping that I do. I do keep journals and scrapbooks so whilst I talk you through these I thought I'd do a flip through on the screen and eventually I'll be doing some process videos and tutorials about scrapbooking so I thought I'd start off with a video about what I do and how I incorporate that into my day to day life. It's not something that I've spoken about much on my Instagram or on YouTube so far but I have spoken about it quite a lot on my blog and there's a few posts on there if you did want to have a deeper dive into the sort of things that I do. So I've been keeping journals for years, I think my first one I started when I started uni which was in 2009. These are more like visual diaries so they're very personal, there's a lot of uh, teenage angst in here because obviously I started it when I was at university. They're a really nice way to get my thoughts out in a creative sort of way. I really enjoyed creating these and I know when I was a student I had a bit more time than I do now and it's, it, I really appreciate that I have these to look back on. A lot of this is full of collage and paints and it's certainly a lot more techniques that I was experimenting with back then when I did have more time to do so. These are really lovely to look back on. I'm really proud of what these look like even though, you know, they don't always hold the nicest sort of memories. It was definitely like my word vomit book where I just write down all my thoughts and feelings. These journals were more for me so I didn't share these on the internet or anything. Certainly not back then and I probably won't now because there was quite a lot of uh, personal stuff in here. but. It really helped me get my thoughts out and it was a good outlet for me, both creativity wise and also thoughts and feelings wise. So as I went through uni and as I entered the actual grown up adult world of getting a job, I definitely create less journaling now than I did. This journal goes through my start of my first real job in the industry. There's, the pages are certainly more few and far between than the first one I did at university but it still documents the important stuff and the big milestones in my life. There's definitely still a lot of personal stuff in here but also a lot more experiments in painting uh, so like this page for example was pattern making that was a course by Ashley Goldberg and a lot of collage and just again a nice way for me to have a creative outlet. This one I started in 2012 and generally when I journal I do do it chronologically. So I haven't finished this book but I don't think I will because I generally don't go backwards. This craft one is what I sort of see as my junk journal. It's certainly more neat but it's kind of like a smash book. I don't know if you've heard of those or remember them but it's basically where I take my big box of journaling supplies and I just throw it in. So this one isn't chronological, it's just finding nice things and throwing them all together. So this one isn't really a diary, it's more of just an amalgamation of all the nice things that I collect and a nice way to put them into a book rather than having them in a big box. I know that I have a lot of supplies and I'm a bit of a hoarder with stuff like receipts and nice little bits of car that I like or business cards from trips and they don't always get into the scrapbook or the document that I've kept my memories in, so this is a good way to keep them rather than just have them in a box and not look at them again. This is my most recent journal which was started in 2015, so you can see that I don't do it that often, but I'd like to. Um, it's just one of those hobbies that I love to do but I don't make as much time for because I do a bit more illustration now. But again, this does have some pages where I've talked about my feelings or what I'm going through at the time. Uh, specific events and then also just some nice pages where I've printed out a few too many photos for my scrapbook and then I don't want to get rid of those but they don't need to have their own page in the scrapbook so this is a nice way to just put them in a different book and keep them but not necessarily tell the whole story. This is also the one that I used recently for my journal challenge which I ran on Instagram and definitely one that I'll keep going with because it's not finished but like I said, 
it has been it has spanned from 2015 all the way through to 2020 so that's not a lot of pages in five years but that's fine that's just life at the moment um, and maybe when I'm older I will prioritize creating journals more than scrapbooks but for now it's still nice to look back on and it still holds the big memories I want to document okay so these are my scrapbooks and these are definitely what I work on more regularly so I do a mix of 12 by 12 layout and Project Life. Project Life I document monthly. I've been doing that since 2014 and I now have three of these albums full up. If you've not heard of Project Life before, it's a memory keeping system by Becky Higgins. Unfortunately, it does seem to be harder to get in the UK now, a lot easier in the US, but I find it's a really nice way to monthly showcase the pictures that usually would stay on my phone. So I create one pocket page per month. So as you can see here, I've got one month on the front and one month on the back. These are interspersed with my 12 by 12 layouts, which generally showcase a specific photo or event. So big events like birthdays or day trips or holidays. The monthly layouts have the photos that, you know, you generally take on your phone, like the meals that you go to, the general daily events that you do and it is quite streamlined because obviously I've only got a pocket page for the month. I know some people do Project Life weekly but for me that's too much of an upkeep and monthly is absolutely fine. I'm definitely behind on my Project Life. I've only got up to November of last year so I'm almost a year behind but I have started to print out all the photos so the next few videos or some videos on my channel will definitely be a big project life catch up. So I plan on creating project life process videos and scrapbooking videos and then every now and then some journaling process videos because that is something I want to get back into. But again, like I said, the project life I do need to catch up on so there might be a few longer videos where I do a few monthly layouts because I am so far behind and then Hopefully by 2021 I'll have caught up and will be up to date. So those are the way that I scrapbook and keep all my memories in one place. And if you want to see anything in more detail or to talk through the processes in any of the things that I've shown, then just let me know down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you're new here then please subscribe and I'll see you next week. See you later.